Hello everybody, welcome to Window to Hollywood. Uh, my name is Joseph Perlman and this is Eugene Nomura. Hello, konnichiwa. We are here with a very special guest, actor Ken Yamamura. Ken, thank you for hanging out with us. <laughs> so happy so to, to welcome you. <laughs> and um, I'm excited to, to dive right in here. Yes, uh, let's go. Ken, yeah. Thanks for doing this. No, no, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Easy. Super easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're in Tokyo right now? I'm in Tokyo right now. Cool. How's it going there? Interesting. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, how Japan took on this is quite different to, to other countries, I guess. And um, we've been locked down, or not exactly like locked down, but uh, we were isolating ourselves at home. And then yeah. um, as of this Monday, um, all the restrictions got lifted. So we can officially go anywhere, meet anybody, do anything really. Um, oh, wow. But it's not like, you know, everything changed within, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw some chilling out of the restrictions, which I thought was cool. And it, I'm assuming it means that things are chilling out a little bit there. Does it feel mm. like more chilled out or is everybody? Well, it's, so it's funny, actually, that, um, you know, now that the government said, OK, you know, you're kind of OK to do anything. And then all of a sudden, you know, there are more people who are not wearing masks and, yeah. you know. A train is more crowded than before. Um, just, yeah. But um, my wife is still at home uh, working remotely and stuff like that. So it's not, um, I guess, a dramatic change as such, but um, yeah. gradually. Mm. Good. Is is everything open? Like restaurants too? and like. I think so. I haven't. Wow. Yeah, I haven't yeah, been anywhere just yet so <laughs> yeah. how are you doing how, how are you personally doing do you uh you your family um yeah i'm okay and my family uh, it's okay as well um i actually don't want to work anymore because you know i locked myself up for a while and i now now i'm quite used to it <laughs> <laughs> oh meaning uh, oh meaning you're enjoying the enjoying you're enjoying being chilled out a little bit right is that what you're saying comfortably being at home and um, i so love that yeah. you just said that <laughs> that's that great so, i feel the same way eugene i don't know about you <laughs> like, you know me too i think I it's, it's 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 very yeah. it's good and contained and i'm always with mm. my family so it's it's great mm, yeah nice yeah the, the healthy <laughs> morning <laughs> walks with my son and you know is it is great. it the same in in la how what's the situation like there it still hasn't really, we're still on lockdown, pretty much. Restaurants are just, you know, um, takeaway and delivery. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, no, nothing's, nothing's really open. I, don't think. I mean, supermarkets have been open. You know, yeah. Pretty much, we're all still contained, I think, for a while. It's, it's been like this mm -hmm. for a little while, so I feel like we've kind of been in this for a while. Um, I was mm -hmm. so weird because... Eugene, Ken, I was in Palm Springs for the weekend, which is about less than two hours drive from L.A. And all the restaurants were like open for outdoor seating. So it was really bizarre oh. to go from Los Angeles just a couple hours and you have all the restaurants are open for outdoor seating. And nobody's wearing a mask, of course, because you can't eat with a mask. But it was they were distance, but I was still very like uncomfortable driving by. It was really wow. weird. Are but they sitting like... That. Are they like four people seatings? Would the, would there be four people, or is it like two people? No, there'd be like, mostly two people. Uh, it would be mostly two people, maybe three, maybe four, but usually mostly two people, and just outdoor only, not indoor, and a lot of takeaway. But mm -hmm. I just saw that as a really good sign. I I wouldn't want to do that. Um, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> doing that, but it was nice to see other people doing that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it's we. You know, it's been. Yeah, it's been sort of weird for a while, but it feels like there was a sort of turning point, I don't know, early this week with the CDC kind of bringing the, you know, the mortality rate down to point whatever it was, point four, point mm. six, or something mm, like yeah. that. And that that's, I'm definitely feeling a little bit more of a chill, a chilling out. I don't know about you, Eugene. But. Oh, uh, we're, we're chill. Um, it's, it's funny because... I guess we're agents, so sometimes, like, when I'm walking with my son, this is just the other day, I was walking with my son, 
on this like trail because the trails have opened and like close to my place we could it's like walking along the houses and it's like a big like cliff hill mm -hmm. on the right mm -hmm. side and we we're walking and this lady came from the other side and there was like a hill as soon as she saw us she ran <laughs> oh, she, really? like, really? she climbed the top of the hill and she's like oh, oh shit <laughs> she's like <laughs> we're like oh my god my son's like is that because we're like Japanese I'm like yeah probably yeah, but you yeah, know yeah. it's okay you know <laughs> she could glare at us all she wants. Maybe I should chase her. Did you cough? <laughs> Did you cough? I should have. I should have just been like, oh. <laughs> but it's good my son knows this stuff already. You know, mm. so it's not something that will suddenly hit him and go, what was that all about? You know, but it's good. <laughs> Everything else is no, it was a wow. beautiful walk, though. Beautiful views. I wish I could show you, like, the. The sunset and everything is beautiful. I've seen some of your pictures. Ken, can you guys like walk around? Is it just, is it all indoors or can, do you want to walk around or? Yeah. You do? Oh uh, yeah. Um, people are, people are walking around, I think. People are jogging and you know, just, just how crowded Japan is. Um, wherever you go, um, people everywhere. Actually, it's, it's funny. Um, uh, the city center is more empty than the suburban area mm. now. Because um, oh, wow. uh, before we were, you know, uh, we had to lock ourselves um, up a bit. Uh, but, you know, we still have to go to supermarket to survive and stuff. Um, so we do. And you go to a nearby supermarket and that's more crowded than, say, Shinjuku or Shibuya even. So, oh, wow. <laughs> it, there, it was did, actually did, safer did, to go in. Did, they, did you guys control the like, how many people? Like in the US, you would control how many people could enter the supermarket and stuff? Uh, no, no, we, we we had we had nothing. Okay. It's just that like there were tapes of where you 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 can you know you should stand. Okay. And, mm. and stuff like that, but then you know apart from that. Yeah. But yeah, the, I mean, there's so much. I mean, less less numbers for Japan in total. U.S. is enormous. So yeah, we have so many. I think U.S. is more honest about certain things i feel like you know because i don't know that like numbers i feel like is a little bit controlled or something because i think yesterday or the day before yesterday i heard only 26 people had the test and apparently apparently more than half of them were positive oh so wow. it's like just the percentage of being positive is actually quite high so yeah what if we actually tested more people um it's going to change. And that's yeah. why they don't test a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I heard I heard from one of the actor, my actor buddies that it was in Japan, Japan, and his friend supposedly had the COVID-19 probably. So he was like asking, and my friend was asking people, how can you get tested? Because yeah. he has all the symptoms, but the doctors are saying no. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> Does anybody have a personal doctor that they have friends with, you know, because we want to mm. cure him? So that was the kind of email that came to me. But, you know, that was guy. happening here for a while. You just, you just couldn't get tested. Jeez, mm. yeah. One of the things that was a surprise, Ken, was that, like, I mean, as this thing hit, it's obviously production was stopped in various places, but the acting, the auditioning, the writer's rooms, all this industry mm. activity started to pick up. It got busier and busier, which was one of the most surprising, amazing things. I didn't know when this thing first started, it was like, it was like, it was a moment of sort of surrendering. It's like, okay, um, we're just gonna, just gonna gotta let go of some stuff because this is way out of my control, at least mm. doing what I'm doing. But I think it was like an incredible surprise. There wasn't a single moment when the industry, other than production, slowed down. And that's where it was just like, wow, okay, this is really cool. I guess we're still, there's still, we're just still moving here. So that's, that was probably wow. the biggest surprise of this whole thing was that like, wow, auditions are still happening uh, more than ever. So yeah, that was a cool, cool element of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's quite surprising to hear, actually. Oh, wow. Things were actually moving forward. 
and yeah, still are. A lot, a, yeah, a lot of yeah. Zoom meetings, you know, producers meetings everywhere with Zoom and everything, I think, you know. General meetings with production, actor, audition tapes, skyrocketing mm -hmm. like agents that were sending in, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 video auditions, all of a sudden sent in 105 video auditions like one week early in the process. One of the management companies that um, I work with closely and so yeah so so that's been it's almost unreal um how much is going on so oh wow i only auditioned once and that was yesterday so i should be worried that <laughs> well, the auditions. i don't think you should be worried i think one of the things that is we talk about a lot in the community um the community at the studio is that it's way easier than it ever has been to build relationships with the people that you've always dreamed of working with. And so it's just, it's easier for actor and rep teams or just actors or reps um, to use the phone to pick up the phone and start building relationships, scheduling virtual general meetings and people are really starving to talk. And so it's, I think that the actors and the rep teams who know about, they, you know, they pick up the phone and they pitch but, you know, I mean, that being said, is like, are, are you, was it an audition, a U.S. audition? Was it a Japan audition? Or what kind of audition was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, my audition that I did. Yeah. Um, uh, that was, um, that's a, a, a U.S. audition. A uh, U.S. audition. For, aiming for, like, September shoot. That's oh, cool. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess that's that's part of the reason why I didn't get, get many auditions as well, I guess. Because, you know, even when, um, well, I could have done, like, maybe general, so... And stuff like that, but um, um, even when I, you know, hopefully book a job or whatever, you know, there's still a band to to go to different places. You know, I can only stay <coughs> in Japan, so That's I can true. only do yeah at the moment. You know, stay here and yeah, for sure. I don't. I mean, I think a lot of production is still stalled out, but the last couple of weeks, some production is slowly kind of coming back to slowly smaller, in a better way, I think. Mm. Um, we've been talking a lot about like where the industry going is going is better than it has been. And I think the, the great attitude of the people in the industry that are looking forward to sort of like who we could be and what we could be as a result of this versus trying to get back to some place. Those are the, it just has been a good mm. attitude to have, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's so, that's been cool. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool actually that you know because if this didn't happen, you know I didn't, I don't think you know this happened, and that <laughs> I didn't have a chance to actually you know talk to guys like this. Yeah, well, this is great. This is great. Mm. I mean, yeah, when was the last time we met? <laughs> it's been a while, right? It's been a while. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because um yeah I was in LA I think in two thousand. 16 i think oh my, so four is that years the ago. last time yeah yeah that was the last time we saw each other oh, uh, wow. so it's been a while wow oh that's <laughs> you, you haven't changed oh wow do you have any any um japanese like things you're going to be working on soon or anything I actually had one uh, Jidaigeki, a period, period uh -huh. piece, period samurai piece. Uh, drama thing um, uh, in April, but that got postponed yeah. to, to August. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, I've got a bit of time. But yeah, the, the um, interesting sort of surprising thing that happened to me was um, I never, I, you know, I just, you know, I just being an actor um, for a while and I didn't exactly think of, you know, directing or creating, producing or anything like that mm. at all. But, um, you know, since this happened, uh, me and my friends just decided to um, to write something together. And, um, oh, great. and yeah, um, we've been working on this uh, as a feature film, but then uh, we can get a grant from Toko as well. So we decided cool. to shoot a, a short film first, short version short film version of that first and then get money hopefully and then uh, trying to make it into feature which I was kind of imagining I would do it sort of in my like later sort of career like I didn't mm -hmm. think I would do it straight away but 
just happened and no that's it was great really fun that's great <laughs> how does it feel oh it was amazing like i mean nice. it's been amazing i mean there are so many things to do and just you know finally learning start you know starting to learn the um the other side of of uh, filmmaking mm -hmm. and there are so many things to do <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy oh it's not easy but it's it's easier mm -hmm. i guess to just be an actor mm -hmm. as opposed to you know trying to make you know everything happen and you know um, you yes, have to yeah. care for different people, um, you know, making sure, you know, they're, they're looked after. <laughs> oh, this is, yeah, this yeah. is something. And also, um, in the uh, butt, huh? <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, you know you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you do is amazing. This... Well, no, what you do. Wow. So you, so you already finished shooting or you just no, no, the script? No, no, we... We we finished this uh, the script and uh, we're trying to get um, I think we got most of the people now to shoot and uh, uh, confirming the locations and now um, yeah we're aiming to shoot within two weeks. <clears throat> wow, cool. oh, that's so, great! They're gonna shoot cool. uh, shooting in Japan primarily in Japan. Yeah. That's so exciting. <laughs> oh, that is. Cool. That's exciting. That's writing great. writing something from from scratch was um. Yeah, it was something that I, I never thought of doing, but did it. <laughs> yeah. How was it? How was that experience? Like, did it come it's from good. you, I'm... the whole gist of it? Or did it, we, talking to your friend, it kind of gradually came up? and. Yeah, it's it's kind of like that. I guess it's it was more of a, a collaborative sort of idea. Um, so we talked about the story a lot, actually, using Zoom and everything. And um, yeah, we talked for days and months now or two months <laughs> and um, now <laughs> finally got shaped and um, it feels great it's it's amazing wow are you going to be acting in it a little bit as well and then for the feature i've got a main part as well myself. <laughs> this is what i'm talking about ken you're so busy this is awesome <laughs> i mean you know it's like you don't have time to do that other stuff like you're making stuff so this, mm. that's badass that's great <laughs> It's really cool. Wow. Yeah. It's good. It's, I don't know why I was avoiding, the, uh, you know, making some stuff. You know, there are so many people making their own stuff, which I respect. You know, I've always respected that. But I was like, oh, you know, that's not my stuff or whatever. But, um, yeah, no, I now regret that I didn't start earlier. <laughs> don't you think, I don't know about you, but don't you think that, like, I personally think if this COVID thing hadn't happened... Um, I am realizing that it's easier to get from point A to point B on so many more things than I ever, in, in so many different ways than I ever imagined before. And like thinking about recording stuff and connecting with people and bringing large groups together. It's like, mm. I've been in love with this Zoom platform. I mean, just, just the way the speed and the infinite level of um, productivity and connection that you can have with people like this. I don't know about you, has that been, do you think that's made a difference? It's just sort of like, we're pushed onto this platform. Did that make the difference for you or was it just not sort of everything else having stopped? I think I agree with you entirely. Like, you know, cause there are so many things like like this talk, you know, meeting different people online. It's yeah. so much easier now for some reason. Totally. Before, it, like before uh, COVID happened, you know, meeting some people uh, physically was very difficult. You know, some people wouldn't have time to meet and stuff like that. But now we have time. We actually can afford to, maybe that's not, not a right word, but uh, afford to, <laughs> you know, meet uh, people who we have met and, yeah, it's and that you know the results um, are quite good. I think in 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 some way, like we didn't, yeah. ex you know, there are things that we didn't expect to to have. Yeah, I, I think people are in a better place personally, Eugene. I don't know about you, but I feel like mm -hmm. people are working from home. They're like taking maybe taking better emotional care of themselves, hopefully. And they're like, not only do they want to talk, is it easier to connect with people, but people are more sort of receptive to it. So which makes me feel like people are maybe throughout all this crazy stuff starting to feel better instead of feeling mm. so pushed and pressured. And, and I don't know how much of it has to do with the yeah. driving and walking around versus, but 
I cannot tell you how much happier I am in general. Just like being at home, being closer to my family, my wife, my daughter, my dog is not complaining about it. And uh, <laughs> it's like, I, that's all, that's all also, I think part of it is that people, it's not just that it's easier. Yeah. It's like people are actually taking a more of a breath than they ever have. I, I think so. I think so too. I think, I think it's the home thing which works because everybody feels safer at home, you know, yeah. whether you're out of work or whatever it is. And it might be, you know, like, oh, there's so much crap you have to face in the yeah. real wor world and all that. But you're talking to people from your safe zone. I'm laughing because I, I there's an expression like the, p the greatest accidents happen like this short distance from the house. And I like I fell down today, like with a cup of coffee and like hurt my ass. I like fell on my coccyx and I'm like, my neck is fucked up and like and I'm like oh my god this is crazy like death trap being at home <laughs> so, um, I, I got a little paranoid today but yes in general I feel safer at home that's the order yeah. the safer at home order but shit it's scary what is that you guys what is that like we have you heard about that it's like the the greatest majority of accidents happen like a certain distance from the house. Exactly. It, it usually happens. It, it, it's the stupidest things ever. You know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's not, I don't want to tell you like how I fell, but it's like, embarrassing. You don't get hurt in a, neck, in a car accident, but you like fall. And then right. you just like yeah. break a bone somewhere. Or, you know, that always happens. You like, step on your daughter's Lego or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to do that a lot. So. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Ken, 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 he came to um, see your master class. Was that last week? Last week. Yeah. Ken, when did that you come? Was last week. Last week. Last thank week. you um, for coming. Yeah. No, no. Um, thank you for having me. Because you, you um, could only pleasure. stop by for an hour or so because you had Yeah, I, it was only an hour. That was a shame. Um, I had to go. Um, but um, oh, I, that was brilliant, and um, awesome. um I felt like. Being a first year again, you know, all cool. the actors were amazing. They were so open-minded and, and you know, great. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, I got a little bit intimidated for some reason. Aww. Oh, sorry you got intimidated. I'm so honored that you were there. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for hanging out. I, I do teach afternoon classes, which would probably make me be more fun to stay a little longer. But thank you for hanging out. And, no, no, uh, no. That was being a part of the work. I really appreciate that. That was amazing. They is it, are... Like, is it, yeah. Oh, please, go ahead, Jess. I was going to say that, you know, these are people... I really think of it as a community. And so I see these people... These are great people, first and foremost. And they also happen to be great actors. So it's, like, really a joy to, to, to hang out with these people. And, uh, yeah, glad you got to see the work. Thank you. Mm. And I could tell you you were having fun as well, and you know, <laughs> so the two matches as well. Oh, it was it was unbelievable. It's just, just something that I had to sort of like, I don't know, just like being in Japan and you know working here and there. You know, you sometimes lose the the fundamental part of um, what fun acting can be or what you know just creatively like I don't know you, you lose this momentum and you, you lose this passion about certain things I feel like you know just going to set every yeah. day and you know just do what people tell you to do is a bit you know like Japanese shooting so um, watching your, your class reminded me of how I started as well <laughs> how, how did you start? Um, well, um, <laughs> I actually uh, studied acting in, in Australia. I went to Australia to study acting only because um, uh, Japanese, um, there, weren't, there weren't many Japanese acting schools, or not that I was aware of, um, but I realized, uh, and you know, not many Japanese actors study acting, they just become actors. <laughs> <laughs> out of the blue um and um yeah i i um got influenced by the lord of the rings when i was 18 years old actually um and i wow. I, I thought oh wow this is amazing like this <laughs> it's a bit lame but um <laughs> um i didn't realize it's a job 
I didn't realize mm. it's what people do for their livings. Um, and that's when I realized, okay, I want to do this. And um, I looked up, you know, all the people that were involved in this film uh, and people studied. They all studied acting or, yeah. you know, directing or everything. So I thought, oh, you know, I have to study. So that's why I went to, to Australia. Um, and during that time, it was cheaper to go to Australia than to the States or to the UK um, <laughs> and closer. And mm -hmm. uh, because um, many of the actors were from Australia in the Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Because it was, it was in New Zealand. They shot in New Zealand, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you were there during that time as well. No, no, actually, um, I know the crew. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the same uh, crew as the on, last time. It's the same crew as Emperor. Oh right! Oh right! And of yeah, I worked with that. the majority of the of the Lord of the Rings crew when I was in a New Zealand film when I was twenty three. And they went on to Lord of the Rings, and they all got Academy Awards. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, but they're great, great people, great people. How was the training? Was the training, do you remember it? Because I'm thinking back, and I know you, Eugene also as well, we, we all kind of went through training. Was it useful? Was it fun? Did you enjoy it? I mean, was it something that you were excited about? Did it live I, up to your excitements? Definitely. Um, I think if I could another, another, if I could have another life, I'll choose the same life still. I, will, cool. I would still That's go to great. the same school that, that I went. Um, although... Um, now I, I can speak a bit of English. Um, at that time, my English was quite limited. So um, it was quite tough as well. And, um, wow. and um, first year was um, quite hard because um, that's, you know, that's when you learn the very fundamental stuff of acting as well. And we had this one impro class for, uh, for a semester. We had like really scary, um, teacher from Venezuela, um, who's like an <laughs> army general, um, <laughs> and um, uh, you have you had to be you know I had to be open uh, to anything, and you know you had to just do it when when he tells you to. <laughs> um, that was a scary sort of thing, but that's so useful now. Uh, back then, I thought you know I, I'm I'm shit at. Um, improvisation because you know I, I get scared um, and um, <laughs> there are many things that come you know come into my head yeah. so yeah. but then um, I did a film a BBC film last year which hasn't been released yet because of this um, uh, it's a comedy film it, it, it's a comedy film and it's there um, we had to do so many improvs that that's when I finally realized oh it's all it's all there you know, I did this training and I thought, you know, I would never do improv ever again. <laughs> but mm, mm. <laughs> uh, but it, it was all there, on. actually. Like, I yeah. could actually respond to it and I actually had uh, quite a lot of fun. <laughs> it's not really? like in, in, in school how, like, there's certain things that you know you'll never use again. And, like, in acting, <laughs> it's like, you use it. Yeah. Mm. Well, that was surprising. Uh, and... Yeah, and my acting school was um, pretty cool. It was fun. Um, I had a right. British professor. Um, that's why I got a bit of accent influence as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was really good. Wow. I, I would love to go back there once in a while, but um, it's a bit hard to do that physically. Now that you know we have this, maybe, maybe yeah. I, can, I, I can do that. I would think it would be easier than ever to, I mean, I would think it would be incredibly valuable for the actors who are there to, to maybe hear from you. Um, it's super easy to schedule, a, to, to do like a Zoom type of seminar. Mm. I, I've, I've been doing that with my conservatory. It's like, and, and, I, and it, it had been like years trying to do something and there was all this, you know, these things that were just made it so that it just, it couldn't happen, but it, like it happened in the snap of a finger uh, this way. I would just think that it would be a really rich experience for those young actors to hear from you. I and mean, it's very mm. cool. Mm. <laughs> no, that would be good. Maybe, maybe set up a Zoom thing. Even. Yeah, yeah you know, for sure. With, with your school and like, because there's a lot, there's actually a lot, a lot of, I've noticed there's a lot of Japanese actors in Australia, no? There are, yeah, in, in yeah. Sydney. 
Mm. Yeah, they're everywhere, I think, because I remember auditioning a bunch uh, when we were shooting Emperor as well, and mm. we found some very good actors in Australia. Oh, cool. Yeah. Ken, what's fun for you? What would you say are the, like, if you could sort of write your playbook for the year, like, what kind of, what kind of people do you like playing? Like, what, and, um, what are the most fun type of roles for you? Or, or is it just anything that you do you can sort of find the fun in? Hmm, that's interesting. Uh... You can sort of have it the way that you want it and sort of say, hey, if I could just sort of right the next year, I want to play people that get to do this or get to do, you know, uh, yeah. I do, um, I do love playing, um, that antagonist type of character, which, who does, who don't, who doesn't seem to be a bad guy to begin with or something yeah. like that. It's, it's always fun to, to have a bit of twist, um, uh, to the story. So, um, I like those characters. Um, and also, I guess I enjoy I enjoy playing characters that are um, that are um, they are characters, I guess that um, that are easier to play for me than other roles, mm -hmm. um, just because of my personality or something. Um, so if I get some um, characters that are Oh, it's, it's difficult to say, isn't it? Easier characters. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't any easier characters, I guess. But um, there are roles that suit me better than the others, I guess. And um, I would still... Um, yeah, at this point of my life, I guess, I don't want to tackle something that's too difficult for me at the moment. Sure. Because um, I just need to spend more time to grasp the character... Um, so then I can't exactly develop the character into more depth. Whereas yeah. if I can grasp uh, a character quicker, then I have more time to go go in deeper and totally. make it more like juicy, sort of fun, yeah. kind of. Yeah, I need I need time to play around. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the first thing like when you? get a new role or start thinking about a new role, whether it's one that you're writing for yourself or what's like the most important first thing for you to do or what's the most fun first thing for you to do? Hmm. Oh. was <laughs> the uh, first fun thing? Yeah. I think um, coming up with, uh, with the backstory bit is always fun. Um, cool. Of course, based on the script, always. Totally um, sure, yeah. mm, um, always um, imagining what kind of life um, he'd been through. Um, yeah, thinking about that um, is quite fun. And applying that uh, yeah. to the text, yeah, I guess, is a very fun part for me. Mm. Yeah. Um, some, some, um, yeah, I don't know what it is about the, the process. One of my favorite things is just in, in getting in there with clients and actors and, and when I'm doing acting work is getting up there and reading it and talking it out loud. Uh, there's something about the talking out loud. I, uh, Joaquin Phoenix was, I may have told this story in the past or a past video. I can't remember, but he was talking about the Joker. I'm, I'm doing a talk on dangerous acting tomorrow. So I'm talking about what makes for dangerous acting, the stuff that really takes somebody's breath away, that throws mm. an audience off balance, that just like, mm. whoa. Um, and Joaquin Phoenix said with regards to the Joker role, um, he said that I had an idea of the role in my head. And then when I went to shoot it, we shot for some weeks and uh, the director and I, we, it, it was all this new stuff we were discovering. It had the idea made me feel better to have the idea, but it didn't match the discovery and the experience that we were having on set. And um, I, I, one of the things that I really have fun with the actors is I like figuring out and filling in the missing gaps and like, okay, this backstory and what's going on. I mean, that stuff is really fun. Um, but I find that if we do it, if we start talking it out loud, to start to get it up on its feet and talk it out loud mm. versus trying to solve the problem of how to play the character in our head, it's more, it's more useful. Um, 
than having an idea of the character. So one of the things that I love playing with, and you probably saw on Thursday, was the idea of talking it out loud. Um, I believe that like when you start to, t words are powerful. Yeah. When you start to talk out the words of the character, whether it's you're doing your backstory, all the, all the wonderful stuff that you talk about doing, um, something about talking it out loud, the speaking part of it is so fun for me personally. And I love being a part of that, working with actors, on the other side, acting, something about the speaking of it all um, I, I really gets me. That, that's one of the things that gets me up out of bed in the morning is doing that. That's, no, no, that's, you know? that's true. That's true. Now, now that you, you said yeah. that, because um, then, you know, although you can do the whatever, like homework, you know, yeah. the story bit, uh, but when you do speak to, to, to the other actors um, out loud, then that words can affect affect the other actors in a way that you didn't yes. actually expect and yeah that's that's yeah. kind of cool how like you then realize oh wow you know that's he means that or like yeah. you know the, yeah mm -hmm. and your words can affect yourself so before you're working mm -hmm. with other actors your talked out loud words your self-talking um, is actually working on you. I'm, I'm just thinking when I was a little kid, what did I love about acting? I loved actually getting up and reading it, whether it was in a class or in a school, and just like the, the reading out loud. And then one of the things that um, Anthony Hopkins talked about, I, I did a video on sort of how to memorize faster. And one of the things that Anthony Hopkins does is when he gets a new script, um, he reads it out loud 200 times. He reads his lines and all the words of the script out loud because as a theater actor and, and doing a, a show, you know, when you do theater, you, 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 you know that the sixth performance, things start to like occur to you that had never occurred to you before. And then the 20th performance, it's like, oh my gosh, that's what that line means? What? And, mm -hmm. and then something about the talking it out loud, I find is an accelerant. It starts to sort of age it and accelerate it. And so I, I'm, I, I'd say I'm really excited about like, you know, spoken words and talking things out loud. And I, 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 lo I got I'm excited about it when you talked about sort of the things that you did first, the backstory, but I, I love talking it out loud. Something about right. when you speak yeah. it, it starts to like infuse like a pressure cooker, like it really starts to push it into your bloodstream um, in a different way than writing it out or thinking it in the head or something like that. And, and um, I mean, we did a lot of that in class, but just I'm just sort of riffing on it right now. Yeah. I, I read out loud to memorize my lines too. Mm, yeah. Just usually. I just, and then I try to read it um, like flat so there's no like ups and downs or, you know, so it's not like how to say the lines. I just... Yeah. Just just bluntly with no just flat. Yeah. Just blah da 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 and then and then I that's how I used to do it anyway in in Japanese too because yeah. it was like you know different because in Japanese it's a whole different you know sometimes you, it's it's how you say a certain word and it means like a whole something different you know or mm. it's a whole different like language altogether like in like the Japanese language. There's so many ways to express something, or um, the way the the rain falls. You have certain words like, like, or like, so many word like these little words that um, these adjective like words that um, express everything. So like in English, you have what the alphabet, and then you have words. And then I think that's why we need like hand gestures and more mm. movements to express everything, which is why it's good with, you know, playing catch in many ways. Yeah. But with Japanese, you could express everything by words. It's like how, how the rain kind of, kind of falls. It's like, mm. or, you know, mm. or, it's, mm. or it's like, mm. like, like shito shito. the rain shito shito means kind of like little soft, a little a little wet so it kind of feels a bit you could kind of feel like the loneliness in the rain it's like these words that express everything in Japanese so, so it's a it, is it hard when you're learning lines in Japanese is it harder to not get sort of attached to a certain way of saying do you have to make an extra effort to sort of keep it in neutral 
because there's so many emotional ways you could say do you know what I'm saying is it is it hard yeah some, sometimes yes because depending okay. on depending on the style of the writing sometimes it's like it's kind of like I mean not like Shakespeare but a way that you could kind of it expresses so and you could find kind of feel like this kind of a character would not use those words in yeah. Japanese or you know things like that would kind of help actually it helps your character kind of the way this person, which vocabulary he uses to talk and mm -hmm. stuff. But it's, and that's why I always used to just say it out loud. So then people would be like, no, you completely have it wrong. Or mm -hmm. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> 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 you know, I'll be rehearsing in the, and like, you know, in, in Japan, when we shoot the TV series, there's a studio and you have like this little sofa area where everybody kind of sits and watches the monitor and you could see like this, former scenes that they're shooting and stuff and I, I would suddenly start saying my lines that they would kind of have to jump in and hmm. <laughs> to the scene but they'll be like Eugene did, what do you mean by that I'm like well this 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 no and they're like no that's completely wrong okay I'm like okay what does it mean then it means this is okay good 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 <laughs> but you know things like that would happen as well so <laughs> oh that's cool <laughs> people actually said that to you yeah, yeah, I'm open about that, you know, and they know that I, I want to make it better, so. Mm, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it also warms everybody up, because, you know, right, not many people true. do that in Japan. Mm. So. <laughs> what do you guys think about, I mean, I'm sort of thinking a lot about this um, concept of dangerous acting. Like, mm -hmm. what is dangerous acting? It's not... Um, it's not, it's like, not where you're going to get hurt. Like what, what is a dangerous performance? I was talking about that show Breaking Bad. I mean, years ago, there'd be scenes that would just take my breath away. Like, it's just like, I feel, I would feel like I could maybe sort of stop breathing. It was so intense. And I remember a story that Ben Kingsley told about growing up going into the RSC and sort of sneaking in and getting right up front and watching actors like Laurence Olivier and feeling like he was going to pass out because it was so intense. Like he feeling like he was going to sort of pass out. And I, I don't have all the answers to anything. I'm just sort of thinking about like what makes, what is a dangerous performance, a performance that throws an audience off balance, that's teetering on the edge. What do you guys think? What, what is Dangerous or does dangerous does dangerous acting mean something else uh, to you guys? Okay, <laughs> dangerous ha acting. <laughs> um, well, the the first thing that came to my head uh, was to to make um, dangerous choice choices is is dangerous yeah. acting. Um, dangerous choices meaning. Um, I guess, um, you know, because when you read text or when people read text, when, when, um, um, uh, people, um, there, there is a certain way, I guess, that people imagine this, this story would be like, or what kind of acting he would kind of do and stuff like that. So maybe the interest choice, choices is the, the choices that, um, that, uh, are the ones that people don't expect and yeah. it might not necessarily lead you to um to to a good good result or expected result mm -hmm. which might be a good good thing sometimes people want the um expected things like yeah. people want to know the ending people want to know um what they want to see already they um, think they want that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, i think they um, think they want that. yeah, yeah i know true. what you're talking about yeah because you know you watch you watch your favorite movie all you know all over again you know mm -hmm. so many times when when you know the ending and <laughs> you know what's going to happen and stuff like that so to a certain extent people do expect uh things to be in a way that they know or in a way that they are um uh <laughs> uh they want to have certain ways in in this sort of much capacity mm -hmm. and i think that making dangerous choices is going beyond that and being being out of control in certain way um yeah. takes you to sort of a different um 
result or ending altogether. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not sure what I'm saying. What I'm I totally sure. get what you're saying. I, yeah. I, I, I feel the same way. I feel the same way. I think we're, I think at the university level, at least the level where I was at, we're taught to make choices that something like what the writer is suggesting in an effort to do justice to the writing. But, you know, I had this revelation some years ago. Is it like, well, are we doing justice to the writing by emotionally obeying everything that's said? And there was a, a Martin Landau had a beautiful quote, a beautiful quote, the actor Martin Landau. He said, in a well-written script, what people say to each other, uh, the words they say, um, is rarely what people mean. He said, 90% of what, what, you, what is not said is what I do for a living. And I think in life, we don't emotionalize, we don't say everything that we're feeling. We, people can see what we mean, but our words might be very different. And so I, I've been, the last couple of years especially, so excited by the power of making these dangerous choices. And I don't feel like we're going too far out on a limb because it's closer to life. I think this is closer to the danger of everyday life is that like, we say things, but we have this whole world of like meaning that's very different than what we're saying. And I, I get to thinking about, I think you're gonna not do justice to the writer if you emotionalize everything that that writer says. That writer's not asking you to emotionalize everything that he or she says. So yeah, I, I agree with you, Ken, 100%. Um, Stella Adler said that the talent is in the choices, but I think it's in dangerous choices. 100% agree yeah. with what you guys are saying. I actually, I just saw a Japanese film last night. Um, which my like good good he's like a son <laughs> but his name is Ikemat Sosuke Sosuke he came to see one of our master classes I just saw his film called Miyamoto Kara Kimie mm. it's it's it was a film that came out last year and he I think he got awards you know several awards for it but man he did he he went that to that danger zone what did he do um, his character is, I mean, he created pretty much, you know, and it was a very, um, hit like manga series, you know, not an animation, but manga series. And then it became a TV series and then turned into a film and him and this other actress called, uh, Aoi Yu, who's, they're both, you know, I'm mm. very close to them. And so I, I was finally able to watch it last night, but man, they were great. They were, oh, they blew me away, man. And so I, I just had to call him this morning. <laughs> I was like, dude, <laughs> cool. good job, good job. And it was, I think, his last job for his, in his 20s. And, and now he's 30. So he's like, I think I, you know, it was like a, uh, what, what, he, um, a mark, a mark for him that he finished his 20s with that film. And, no, it was incredible because he took... No, I think the danger, dangerous choices is always the acting I love. Or like, let's say you go back to a film that you love and there's that one scene you want to see because it will just get to you and you yeah. know it. Yeah. You know, or like a scene in... Like, for me, it'd be like Scarecrow with Pacino or, you know, things like that. That, that scene in Heat with De Niro and Pacino or... You know, these all these other, you know, all these scenes, or like maybe Gary Oldman in True Romance, where he's messing around, having so much fun. But it's those those scenes that just go. And that, that's what gives me energy again. Going, yes, I have to get back to it. But it was so I was so happy to see some of you know the people that are so close to me doing it. <laughs> so when I saw it, I was like, yes. Good job for those two, you know, it was really good. But oh, that, no. to me, yeah, that's the danger, that. danger, because it just, talking about it lights me up. It's like, <laughs> oh, I want to go there too. Let's go. Let's go. It's something, <laughs> yeah. about, something about off balance, being put off balance, putting people off balance and putting yourself off balance. Uh, Eugene, one of the actors in Masterclass, Hugh Scott, a gr mm. gr great actor, like everybody, Hugh's... He's awesome. He, he is awesome. And he keeps, he talked about it for a while and always talks about the off balance nature. And like, it's like one of the things I always say, there's 
actors know the work is great because you feel it, not because you watch your playback or somebody tells you and you feel it. And there are these four things that you feel and off balance is definitely part of that. Um, it's not part of the four, but don't you agree? Yeah. Would you, would you, so then like um, making a dangerous choice, would you deliberately um, make people off balance? Like, would that be a different thing if you made, uh, did it on purpose? Well, I, I think... Feel, I have a feeling that you, you get to that by... Like in Japanese, it would be mubobi. Mm. Like off balance, but mubobi. When you're like off balance, when you're yourself in a way off balance, yeah. and you're doing something, it'll go in the danger zone because you're just living that moment. And then yeah. when you're there living it, people watching go off balance in a way, which way goes into them as well, uh, depending right, on the person. Because you're so. Because mm. if you're stable and you're like this watching everything, you're not, gonna, you're not letting anything in. <laughs> right, right. right. But if you're like kind of like this and you're oh my god, it's like, or you know you get hit in the stomach and you're not ready for it, it just gets to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree because I think you can't control what people see and I think a lot of actors are obsessed with controlling what other people see and controlling mm -hmm. what they feel and I'm a big bull and you cannot control what other people see and you cannot control what they feel but just Eugene I completely agree with what you're saying is that the only control you have is throwing your making dangerous choices to throw yourself off balance and you will definitely throw somebody else off balance but without trying to throw them off balance. Mm. And I think a lot of actors are wrapped up in trying to control what other people see and it's impossible and it's such a full-time job that you can't possibly be having fun, you know, with what you're doing and the and the dangerous choices that you're making. Um yeah, Ken, do you agree with that? Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I guess yeah, now that um yeah, it's clear that um there is a um, difference between trying and being as well like trying to be dangerous yeah. and being dangerous is you know entirely different thing <laughs> <laughs> one is one is effortful and the other is zero effort yeah mm. Mm, definitely and that's yeah. you know uh, when i you know uh, when i have auditions when when i struggle um auditions or on set is when i'm trying <laughs> and uh yeah this Sounds is like the quote of this go. whole segment, I think. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain that a little bit more, Ken? Because I just what you just said is brilliant. I mean, I want everybody to <laughs> like describe, like say if you could maybe just explain it a little bit. I know what you're talking about. Well, I guess um, when I struggle the most, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I realize I'm trying too hard, and um, um, because. I guess there is an image of myself, you know, trying to get to a certain place. Um, yeah. So I'm trying to control myself to a certain place, a controlled sort of, on a controlled sort of path. Yeah. Um, and if I don't get that, I, I struggle and I try harder to get to that place. But um, I realize sometimes there's no path in front of you like, you don't have to go onto the path um to to get to to where you want or like sometimes there's no place that you want to go either um yeah so the best i guess uh, when i feel um good or when i when i have fun with um acting is i don't actually know what's going to happen and it went on a completely different way but it worked out because <laughs> mm. I was just there and didn't try um in a good way I, I think I, I did something you know <laughs> but um I didn't try yeah uh, I didn't push myself I guess is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. This, is, this is fun I can nerd out on this stuff all day I'm on like I love <laughs> just pushing into the sort of outer limits of like what's possible. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that in great, af great acting, it doesn't feel, you're not going to feel like there's any effort because you mm. can't be fun and also feel like you're efforting, you know, putting effort into it for sure. Yeah. Now, um, can I, can I ask you a question? Of 
Of about. course, yeah. Um, when um, preparing for a character, uh, whether it's an audition or for for, for work, um, I uh, having said you know all the um, trying stuff. Then, like on set, obviously you just have fun and uh, uh, do what you prepare to do. But on uh, within the preparation stage. Mm -hmm. Do you still have fun, or do you sometimes struggle um, to prepare? I think every step of the way should be fun, and I, and I think it's especially in the preparation that should be fun. I mean, obviously on set, actors will say it's so hard before it's so easy, and you can kind of break through it and then it's easy, but mm -hmm. no, I, I, think, I think the entire part of the preparation can be fun, and if something isn't fun, then there's a way to make it fun. And that's one of the things that I like to do um, is to like, okay, this isn't fun. Is it working? Let's try to make that part of it fun. Give me an example of something that you would think. I mean, is there something that's not fun for you in the preparation? Is there, what's something that you think could maybe not be fun for an actor in the preparation? Because I think they really could be all fun in that. Maximum fun. Right, right. No, it's true. Um, yeah. Well, the, the recent thing that happened is it's more of a, I guess, physical thing, I guess, is that um, I um, oh, the audition was yesterday and I had to learn another language that I don't I don't actually speak of. Oh, um, man. <laughs> that's not, I don't know, maybe that's not it. Whoa! That's, um, wow. Four pages wow. of... Um, a language that I don't know of or um, I don't have a lot of knowledge of um, <laughs> and of That's course um, really hard. <laughs> it, totally. it ended up really fun though like uh, I, we taped it yesterday actually Liana helped me um, oh, nice. and um, uh, I had so much fun then but uh, preparation stage like I had I, I had three days um, Every day I had a headache. I, I took pills, but uh, but then like all the lines, like so, uh, you know, I spent hours and hours. But like, okay, let's do it. Then you know, at home, um, I, I decided to do like a little test whether I I know the lines, and none came out. And I was like, oh wow, and that's that's a whole day gone already. And you know, I I haven't memorized even one line. <laughs> So um, that I sort of considered that as as oh, maybe wow. sort of not that experience. That's an extreme one. Did you have to learn like Dothraki or something? Like what were you speaking? What, what language were you learning? It was um, that was Korean. Um, oh, and you know you, you think it's quite close to to Japanese language, and in some way it is. Okay. But um, man, it was so wow. Bad. That's like a whole. Uh, that's like a technical feat. That's like insane. Yeah, I don't think I've ever. Hmm. I've been around for a while doing this. I don't think I've ever heard of an actor having to learn an entire new language. That's like you deserve an Oscar just for that. Like <laughs> a whole language for your audition. Like I'm trying to think maybe that really isn't fun. Like I don't know how fun that <laughs> okay. would be. Oh, good then. Because <laughs> oh, I wasn't gosh. having fun. That well. is, I mean, so here's here's how you would make it fun. Uh, there's a guy that I've been working with for, with, uh, for years. He's an incredible accent and accents and dialect coach his name is bob corf c-o-r-f oh i took his um i took his sessions uh, oh cool uh, a few times so you know bob yeah. mm. so he's the best in the business he, he he's the best at what he does so i refer actors so there was an actor i work with eugene simon who a game of thrones actor and he had to play a character who was deaf and had to learn a whole new way of communicating speaking physicalization <laughs> so he worked with bob and Bob's really great at helping to make it fun and help an actor to get there with less effort. So I, I would say I'm a, I'm a big fan of like taking work off of your plate. I would just recommend like going to Bob Corf or something like that because Bob would probably be able to, I would think could make it more fun and take some of the It's interesting, intensity. but I was just thinking like most Japanese actors are probably thinking that about English. Same right. thing, yeah. probably. That's like, true, that right? We have to do a scene in English. Is that right? Crap. I Probably for the, the for most majority of the Japanese actors that are in mm. U.S. films now, they started out going shit. <laughs> <laughs> the lines are in English. 
But I'm telling you, I mean, the Japanese actors, at least that I've worked with through you, Eugene, and through Ups Academy and Liana, incredible actors. I have never seen the work ethic the way that I've seen it with these the, the actors that I work with from Japan and the dedication to like hours a day to learn English and like, you know, yeah. some of the earthquake bird stuff that I worked on. It was like, oh, you worked whoa. on that. Yeah, I did. Oh, I, 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 oh, cool. I worked on that for over a year, and um, and oh. congratulations on that movie, by the way, for you as oh, well. Too. I, I, <laughs> did you have fun working on that movie? It was fun, and that, yes. that's when because um, Alicia obviously worked on Japanese on that one, and that's why I was thinking, you know, she did it, and if I said no, I can't do this, huh. you know, <laughs> the, learning another language, that that would be just an excuse. Huh. So I was like, huh. oh, no, no. <laughs> your English is, I mean, your English is amazing. Alicia, I, I, I remember, that's right, she did speak Japanese. Yeah. She was like, yeah. I don't know if she was good or not. She sounded amazing. I just, she was good. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah, she was good. She was good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so it was like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't remember the, the train of thought we were on, but... Um, Sorry, yeah, was, I interrupted you. What's that? Sorry, I interrupted you, didn't I? No, you didn't interrupt <laughs> me. I, I distracted myself, probably. I, don't know. I was thinking of, like, uh, Earthquake Bird and, and Alicia's Grape. Oh, yeah, so, like, learning learning a language, yeah, that's intense. That's, like, a dude, that is, like, major respect on being able to do that. That's that's insane. That's, like, extreme acting. When, when things like that come, like, my I can feel my body being really tense because... Uh, in back of my head, I know that you know it's a little bit impossible. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I th there were so many times I had to force myself to you know I I want to take a break because my my head was about yeah. to explode. But then I have I had to force myself to do it because otherwise you know I won't I won't learn. So uh, forcing myself to do it wasn't fun. But then like if I force myself hmm. to do it. And even, you know, even one line, if I got one line, it would be really fun. Like, it's something suddenly, all of a sudden, it, it, there is something that I can play with. Um, I'm looking up a quote right now. Um, there's an incredible improvisational pianist. I've mentioned it many times, uh, Eugene, in the studio. Yeah, his name is Keith Jarrett. And Keith Jarrett is most famous for doing, he does these concerts. He's a jazz musician, but they're all improvised. He does like entire concerts, all improvised. And he said, it's amazing because it reminded me of something you said, Ken, it's almost an impossible task. And I think that's where like artists, performing artists like really thrive in these impossible tasks. If something's impossible. And he said to do the work that we do, he said, you have to be insane. You have to, <laughs> You have to be out of your mind. You have to allow yourself to be out of your mind because it's an impossible task. And I love that. It was like, whoa. Yeah, I, I love the way he described it. Like you have to be out of your mind. You have to be insane. And you have to just, you have to just like go for it. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I think like the hardest thing, like an act, sometimes an actor will get like a 21 page audition on a Friday just as he or she thought the week was over and it's due Saturday morning and it's like, they're like, oh shit, you know? But like having to learn a whole new language, man, that's, that tops all of it. <laughs> but that's yeah, insanity. no, it's, it's true what you said though. Like, um, uh, being insane definitely helps you. <laughs> like, um, cause it, you know, remaining sane, um, um, <laughs> the, you know, you, you you always think, oh no, it's impossible. You know, within like one hour, I have to learn three more lines of um, another language. You know, it's impossible. So then yeah. you won't even try, like you won't even like let yourself absorb it. Whereas, um, if you're just like insane, <laughs> you think you can do anything, and you actually <laughs> do it. You know, yeah. you just you know. <laughs> I want to deconstruct this even more. I, I, I love this being insane. Like, like, is it like, how do you get insane? Is it a mindset? Is it a like, what is being insane or like consciously trying to be insane? Like, how, how, well, how do you think about it, Eugene, Ken? Like, being insane, is it a, is it a, 
a different way of thinking? Is it a saying, fuck it? Like, how would you describe, how could we get inside that a little more? Because I, I am so curious about this. What's the door, to, what's the window to insane? <laughs> Welcome to window to insanity. How do you... <laughs> 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 well, there are actually people who are insane to begin with, so that's um, they're slightly yeah. different, and I actually <laughs> admire them, and I I really envy them that they're yeah. they're insane to begin with. But um, for sane people to be insane, I yeah, I don't know. I think there are steps as well. Like you, you know, you obviously try to become consciously insane, but it's not like you can be insane. Uh, in a moment, like, it's not, like, mm. you, you, when you become <laughs> insane, I think you can feel it, but it doesn't necessarily come when you want it. Yeah. But you can feel it, I think, when that happens. I, I, yeah, you can feel it. I think it's, I think it's when I'm in search of something. Or, like, I just remembered, like, when I was doing some way back doing some sensory work and we were trying to feel the breeze and the winter and the this and the that and we just kept going because I couldn't feel shit I can't feel <laughs> the it sensory I work will make you the insane breeze, you know <laughs> and I was just doing it and it was for this for this one scene we were doing it I was partnering up with a friend and it was for this one scene from this play um, Memory of Two Mondays I don't know if you know I forgot but it was this young kid and this other guy who's been working at the factory. And this younger kid is going off to college soon. So he's working part time. And then you have this older one who's there and he's got drunk and he's this. And he, and he kind of takes care of the younger one because he has a future. And so it's about them wa wiping a window. The whole scene is like the beginning is wiping a window. And then you feel the four um, seasons. So, and then there's lines saying, "Oh, look at look at the cat! That cat's walking in the snow." Or you 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 feel that cold breeze, or you, you kind of go through four seasons while you're wiping the windows. Mm. And I wanted to feel it. <laughs> and so we were rehearsing. We started rehearsing at night. And when I noticed, the sun came up. And that was the time. I think it was the sun, but something, I felt something <laughs> for the first oh, time. That's but that insane. Was, that's like 12 hours. That's, that's insane. insane. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think insane is also that dangerous, the danger zone yeah. as well. Is when you're, going, when you're there and you know you're not normal. Or I mean, you're there, but you're concentrating on something, you know, so you're so in the moment, you don't mm. give a shit about anything else. Yeah. And then when you come to think about it, it might be insane from other people's perspectives, but from your point, it's like, no, I'm living life fully right now. Yeah. <laughs> that, this reminds me of, have you guys seen the Paul Thomas Anderson movie, The Master, with Joaquin Phoenix, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and Amy Adams? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ken, have you seen that one, The Master? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. I wanted to see that, but I haven't actually. Yeah, no, I, I recently watched it. Uh, I think it's still it's still on Netflix. It's up there. Um, yeah. So so you can watch it. It's so good. There's a point. It's almost like Philip Seymour Hoffman is sort of this, like, kind of like a Scientology figure. Um, and he's, he's sort of rehabilitating Joaquin Phoenix, who's deeply damaged. And he takes him on these things that resemble the most like fucked up acting exercises. It's like, it's like <laughs> acting exercises like gone crazy. It's like what I think it's like what I remember about acting school. There were these impossible exercises that were designed to actually make somebody insane. I said like <laughs> sensory work will do that, I think. And so, so it was like. If Philip Seymour Hoffman was talking about it in an interview about, like, it reminded him of acting school. Like, the impossible things that you're asked to do to sort of pop these insane moments out of you. And then I was also thinking about, in the moments of insanity, I think one maybe has a blank mind. Your mind is not attaching what's happening to anything. It is, like, purely, it's this purely blank there's something about that which I find to be interesting is that we're not connecting anything logical 
we're just, you know, we're not even thinking about anything. So something about a blank mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then also being pushed into insanity by somebody like, I remember like Meisner uh, years ago at NYU, we were doing Meisner and we were working on the same exercises for like months. And it was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, this is crazy. Why are we doing six months or six months of repetition exercises? Like, I think, yeah. So that kind of stuff will make you nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You might have to edit this. I, I did that too. I did a lot of repetition. <laughs> it's crazy. And um, the repetition, yeah, that, that was obsessive. It was way too much repetition. I guess, I guess, I guess, I um, I, uh, you know the the, um, the improvisation class that I was talking about earlier, um, <laughs> first first um, year improvisation class. Um, the I think it was the even the first lesson ever. Um, uh, Venezuelan teacher um, was like, "Okay, guys, make machine, make machine," and I'm like, huh? "Make machine, come on, make machine," <laughs> and I couldn't actually quite hear his accent as well. So I questioned him as well. What is um? He said machine. So um, I was like, "What is a machine?" No, just like shut the fuck up and just <laughs> make machine. <laughs> that was a bit um. God. I think we all have something. Huh? I had a lot of song and dance. Have you had that? You stand up in front of everybody and they say sing. So I was like, sing, okay. And it's like my first day, I'm nervous as heck and there's everybody's watching. And I, start, I forgot what I started singing. I started singing something and then they're like, no, you're not singing. I'm like, you just told me to sing. It's like, no, s say it to each person. Okay, which kind of pissed me off. So I started singing this Japanese song mm -hmm. called Donguri Koro Koro. And I was like, <laughs> do, and looking at each person one by one. And then you're nervous. And then they're like, dance. And the coach claps. And I'm like, what, what do you mean dance? <laughs> so so I'm, they're making you sing this song. And then they're saying dance. And then so I, I was like, what do you mean dance? So make a movement. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, ah, I feel ridiculous. And they're like, keep doing the same thing. And start, keep singing to the next person. And when I clap, change the movement. I'm like, then you said dance, movement, okay, whatever, okay. So I keep doing this. In front, so you start making these weird movements because it's so sudden. But then I realized what it was for is when you get nervous, you do a lot of things that you don't like notice, like tightens of the lips or like eyebrows moving up depending on person or or you see actors sometimes their hands are moving without them noticing or you know these these <laughs> these weird things I'm like, oh now i know okay i have to accept this <laughs> i have to accept that i'm nervous ah fuck it mm -hmm. and then but they made me do it so many times <laughs> it was scary in the beginning but i got used to it right <laughs> I think it's an attempt beauty. to provoke violent emotions out of people. It was. It <laughs> was very... Stuff. Yeah, I was in New York. I was very lonely, too. So I was like, oh my God, what, it, what have I gotten myself into? But... I can see moments. It's quite fun. fun. I'm trying to think yeah. of better ways to get actors to... to um, Always more fun, efficient ways to get the people I'm working with to take risks, to give them permission to walk out onto the ice where it's so thin that they might fall through. And that, that's really fun for me. I've always had a, um, I've always liked surprise in this work. I like to surprise people. I like people surprising me. I like being surprised and to sort of get to that surprise moment and taking a risk. And I think one of the first big risks that I usually see with actors, you guys, is like when getting them to make choices that are not, not to not, getting them to make choices that are different than the text because we as human beings do that. So it's like, and then they'll be like, oh, but can I do that? Or should I do that? Like, and I'll say, you can't afford not to do that because you're still saying the text because they're thinking that people know exactly what they're feeling and they don't know what they're feeling. So no matter what somebody's going through, when you speak the text, 
real and connecting and all that, it's like somebody's getting the text. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's like permission to not obey the stage directions or the character description. It's to not ignore it, but to not obey it. And then to trust in the fun and, and, mm -hmm. and all that. But I, I am always looking for more fun ways to, to get people to willingly go out onto that edge of insanity type of place. It's tons of fun. That's fun. It's yeah. always, it's always like when I always remember like working in Japan and I would do things that would go crazy. But I remember in the beginning, I would, they would just, I mean, I would have lighting guys yelling at me. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, just do it as it's written. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> but I Not always nice remember that pressure in Japan. You know, until a certain point, and then they're like, you know, just do whatever you want. Right, oh, to a certain point. I'm still at the point where, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was working I, I on... I get that. Yeah. <laughs> I was working on this um, uh, drama series last year. It went for, for a year, almost. Um, and, um, mm. you know, how Japanese society works, how um, younger guys, um, you know are expected to do certain things more than uh, older guys um, and older guys don't actually care but like there's this like air of um, us yeah. trying to be like proper the, and the proper young kids <laughs> versus so, the older actors that are just like yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um, I kind of struggled at the beginning and acting wise as well because um, you know um, I didn't want to be the one to delay everything, so I, I felt like I had to get everything um, on the first take, which I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I had this pressure, and you know, I um, the first take wasn't good, so I got even more pressured because the older guys are waiting for for their scene, um, and the I feel all the eyes looking at me, um, going, like, "Hurry up, just just get the scene." I'm like, "Oh no." And got nervous yeah. <laughs> and um so my first couple of months of that series was uh wow. that's that's the one with nakagome san right oh yes oh. yes that was <laughs> yes 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 but then he's a very good 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 friend um and producer who mm. produced the series yeah yeah he's yeah. amazing though he is he's amazing he's a wonderful he, person wonderful person he he made me feel like I was part of the family. Like like it was in my head that I was pressured. Like for the for the first two or three months, I was like pressuring myself. Like you know, everyone's watching, of course, because I'm the one in the center. You know, shooting <laughs> the thing. Um, so I, I felt the pressure, and um, I yeah, um, I was really nervous every time. But now you know, he made me feel so much like part of the family that I kind of uh, was able to let go and um, from then on I, I yeah I was um, cool. had fun and yeah. I, I miss those days <laughs> oh great and it's it's with the the big big writer right yes Kuramoto um, yes yeah, so it's a huge huge one of the biggest writers in Japan um, he used to write this big series called Kita no Kuni Kara. It's, um, it's Fuji TV, one of the biggest shows ever in Japan history, mm. pretty much. And so, and he's the writer. He's famous for not having any of the lines like changed. Mm. So, like during the rehearsal, because I was in one of his shows in the past, yeah. oh, right. and he's there at rehearsals, and I changed the lines because <laughs> uh -oh. I just had to. Because it was completely different, and the director was like, "Go, Eugene." The only thing he said was, "You know, just become, just become the storm of the scene." So I went crazy. I, I had fun, and and then the writer was like, Argh. "In the script, it says, ouch, ouch, ouch. Three dots beneath between the the ouch, ouch, ouch." I'm like, <laughs> I would never say ouch. Oh, man. And luckily, the director protected me, and he's like, "No." For him, it's okay. He's gonna. It's okay. <laughs> but I know how strict he is too. I mean, he's probably aged more too. So it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> how was it working with his script? Was it good? That was good. Um. Well, first, um, was uh, I struggled a bit 
but realized the way uh, I guess later on I realized his style or what he means by mm. uh, writing all each, each characters was like he was writing he wasn't writing in this particular drama especially um, in the part I played um, it's it wasn't uh, exactly a human sort of being although you know I was obviously playing a human being it was more of a representation of that era mm. so when I realized that that made it slightly easier because um, before I was trying to connect myself to the character and yeah I was the same I would never you know say lines like this <laughs> mm. and um, it's I felt like no it's been unnatural you know nobody nobody you know says that you know mm. but um, then I realized it's only a representation of that particular era and uh, my character was the representation of yeah a guy who was living that era Mm. As opposed to uh, an actual one person, uh, one human being. So then I sort of changed my approach, I guess. And, wow. Um, how how is how does that work? How like the the character represents an era, and then how does that work as an actor? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I I kind of I get the gist of what you're saying, but how mm. do you actually try to? put the era in <laughs> <laughs> you know um well it's it's it was quite funny sort of uh, uh, um sort of setting to begin with um my character was a character uh, within a drama that's within the drama mm. so this main character of the whole drama series is writing this um his uh, um, script and that becomes live as if it's happening okay. and that goes from Showa era to Heisei era and goes to the current Reiwa era um, so things happen like war happens um, after war uh, they struggle and then it becomes Heisei when people mm. are rich uh, and then now it becomes now uh, earthquake happens um, and there are characters living that, um, and I played one of the characters then. Um, but yeah, now you you thought you said that um, I'm not <laughs> sure what I was doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you were from what the Showa era, uh, Hesse era, okay, the beginning Hesse of era. Hesse era okay. to, to the end. Okay. Um, but there, there are certain things that um, uh, in the script there, there are certain things that he he does that um, represents Hese in some way, and mm -hmm. um, luckily I was obviously I was alive in Hese era. There were things that I can relate to. Mm -hmm. So then um, I guess um, I could act in my own sort of understanding. Yeah, way. yeah, mm. yeah. Joseph, j just to explain the Showa era. It it changes with the emperor. Okay. So, so Sh the emperor Showa is up to, uh, so uh, when I, I was born, what, 1972. Yeah, what years is that? <clears throat> Showa, 60, when did? When Showa did, era ended, I think I was, um, I was one of the last ones uh, born in Showa era, and that mm -hmm. ended in uh, mm. 1989 i think 1989 was, was the end of um, okay. end of show up i always can't get the 19 something in the show mm. connected <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> so, it's such a pain in the butt <laughs> <laughs> so showa yeah. 64 is so the for the showa emperor went 64 years but then changed to heisei which went about 30 years or so mm. that ended 2 years ago yeah, and then now we have the new Reiwa era, which just started. So it's, the writing is interesting then, huh? So it's mm. it's about a script, a, a writer who's writing a script from the Showa, Heisei, mm. so about an 80 year story. Mm. But and as if uh, in the drama, just as if uh, the, the, the script, this drama is also live, as in it's almost like a another world 
<laughs> so it's like a multi-story kind of drama. It goes back to a real world and then cool. goes into the script. Wow, interesting. And he That's went good. for a year. <laughs> it's one of the few series that goes on for a year, then. Mm. Right? And was... that might have been the la very last of his show. Oh, he's great. 80, 80 yeah, he's, he's old. He's old. What, where is this series right now? What is the status of this series? Is this an ongoing series or what? Or did it already happen? It, it actually ended uh, yeah. in March. Okay. So it was on uh, until quite, quite recently. Cool. Was it fun? It was cool. It was cool. I, um, I, yeah, I, I didn't want to leave, leave the set mm. in the end. <laughs> I didn't want to leave everyone. But now everyone's going to different places. <laughs> it's pretty good timing. I mean, considering the pandemic stuff, it's pretty, mm. pretty perfect timing, I suppose, right? I That's mean, true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. We, we, finished, we finished the production in time. Just in time. Otherwise, Seriously? Um... <laughs> yeah. Wow. What is... I hear a lot of stories in well, doing this, this, uh, this show, but do you find you have less control working on Japanese productions than you would in a non-Japanese production with regards to just making choices as an actor? Do you feel like you're in Japanese productions, you're, you're pulled back to doing more sort of archetype or cliche type of choices? How do you, how do you feel about that, Ken? In terms of, uh, do you adjust based on the production? Do you do you sort of know what you're getting in for when you when you get in and you start to talk to a producer or a director? Because you hear I hear so many times like with with in Japanese productions, the actors are just sort of here's what we want you to do, do that. Uh, what is that like for you? Yes, I guess I uh, try to adjust uh, to what type of production I'm working on and there's one uh, film director in Japan um, that I've worked with uh, a few times already and I kind of know his style so um, and I kind of know what he wants of me so then I'll just do that <laughs> sure um, um, and he's um, he's like a, another army general type of director he uh, <laughs> <laughs> interesting character he's he's amazing um uh, but um it's a bit scary sometimes <laughs> so I'll just i have a feeling i know him yeah uh -huh. right i think i i think you do <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know what it was but as soon as you said venezuelan with this like guy i was like oh that's already <laughs> terrifying like, just, just <laughs> not, venezuelan alone it's like <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. another um japanese um guy and also um the, yeah. the writer that we were talking about he's also um one of the scary ones as well <laughs> there's so many scary ones around me um yeah um, but then, um, and other production guys, as I guess, it just um, depending on the style of the uh, of the drama. But um, some writers write very cliche kind of characters, so you just yeah. just have to play what um, people expect you to do. So there's no uh, there's yeah. not a much room to to play around. Yeah. Um, although, and then uh, when I work on overseas projects recently i um have more chance to work in london um they allow you to um use my creativity a bit more <laughs> so which is always fun i mean you know that's Good. the point really yeah, um, yeah. Do, you think it, do you think it's a matter of just that's just how it's done in certain productions or just that's just that's the expectation or that's just how it's done or is it legitimately that like the director or producer they don't want any outside input or do, do they not know that maybe it would be interesting to get somebody else's idea on this because I hear this a lot we hear I talk about this quite a bit like when actors book the roles the producers start to talk say say it wasn't at all what we wanted it was better they're open to being surprised um what do you think it is? Is it, are they just not open to being surprised, or do they not, do they not know that it's possible, or are they just so? It's it, is there a reason why it's so important for them to do it exactly a certain way? Do you know, like, why is it the way mm. that it is? I guess, um, and I'm not sure if it's only Japan thing, or but but uh, certainly is happening in Japan. Is that um, they are trying to achieve, um, let's say. 
if you um, if you have an exam and um, maximum points is um, mm. 100 um, all the productions in Japan are aiming for just getting like 75 to 80 just to be safe so okay. then they don't get any criticism it just like they 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 are aiming for an okay kind of shows so okay. then they can just keep going for another one um is how i feel and then so then they can they, i think they're playing safe um they don't want to make any uh, surprises like you said um so then uh they get certain amount of money maybe to keep going to make another safe project and then they can make another safe project yeah. That's Maybe interesting. Is what and I probably the other through. thing is probably probably because most of the people that are working in TV, like not everybody wants to work on a TV drama or you know they want to do something else or whatever they want to be or not. But they're all salarymen, businessmen, and they get suddenly they're suddenly an AD, and they have no clue what they're doing, or yeah. none of them have trained to become a director, mm, or you know it's true. not like. There, com there might be a few, but it's not like, you know, so there's a lot of like new people that are there, but kind of doing it. And then the next week, you know, they're in the next three months and then they're off to a different um, position altogether. So it kind of changes all over the place. And then okay. there aren't many places for them to learn, I don't think, mm. you know, so, okay. so they have to play it safe because they don't know. So it is right. about playing it safe. It is about like you. We don't rock the boat because it's like this works, and as long as you do this, then we can keep getting the money to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. And, and 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 plus, probably if you stick out too much, then within the company there'll be power games probably. So if this producer is going too big, then they'll try to get another producer to get better, or you know. Yeah. And but the good ones always stick out at the end anyway, but like. I used to, I used to, because I, I, I know what Ken you you were talking about and how there's that pressure that you kind of have to do what they say, or you you know they make you feel like crap on set, you know sometimes you get fired. Hello. <laughs> but have you, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I have. I kind of had a quarrel with the producer, but you know he was talking money right when we were rehearsing right here, so I kind of said, "Can you get over there and whatever?" And then I was out. But anyway. <laughs> way way young when I was young but I think what I used to do was add a few things or like you know there was a series when I was doing in, when I was 25 and there was like a a cop series and there were four people always eating at a restaurant these ladies were eating at the restaurant and I would come in say there's an incident we have to go to such and such a dead we found a corpse blah 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 but they'd be eating something good food so I would just suddenly snag something this is good. I would just ad lib that stuff, but then they loved it <laughs> because it's oh, cool. And then I'm like, oh, oh, yo, yo, I forgot. We have a dead corpse. We gotta go. You know. So then I would just kind of start adding these comical things in and out. That's but, pretty cool. But once That's you start amazing. doing those things, they kind of let, let. If it works, they'll kind of let you. <laughs> start start putting in a little bit here and there, and then. Oh, cool, cool. No, that's fun. That's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hope um Japanese TV people won't see this. Like just <laughs> no, no it's access. okay. I'll, let's have, let's have Naka Gomez on see this, and he could he could no, we'll he could be a guest. The the MC. Yeah. Come watch yeah. the work in the master class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Delete the ones that um. um... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll take the blame for everything. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Look at see see how the the fear factor of the Japanese entertainment world. <laughs> you say something and they'll like snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sweating now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't said anything wrong. It's okay. Yeah, no, well, we're the crazy. I'm like I'm the like crazy lunatic here telling you to like, ah, you know, <laughs> go opposite, go opposite. Yeah, um, the yeah. Yeah, I just, well, I think one of the great things that came up, I don't know if you heard it in the class last week, one of, one of the other great actors, uh, Teo, Teodora Cristea, Teo Cristea, 
who is such a great person, great actor, she said, I, I do this. She said, she said, Joseph, this is like a drug for me. This is like, a, I do this because it's like a drug. And I love, I love the way she said it because it got to like, even to the bottom of like, I think why we all do this, at least why I do this. Like, it, it's like, it gets me high. She said, it gets me high to do this acting. And I think, uh, I love that. It was so brave and, and ballsy to say that. And that's, that's really, that's like underneath the fun. It like, it makes us feel amazing mm -hmm. uh, to, to do it. For sure. And, and, and I love that about that. I like actors. I like to see them fall into it. If they never knew that before, to see how much fun it actually could be. Oh, you think you liked acting? Well, whoa, holy cow. It could be even, it could be even more fun. And, and, and I think it's like, I, I don't think we're doing, making wrong choices. I think we're, I think we're being human about it. Again, it comes down to in life, how much is what we say a perfect match for what we feel all the time? And it's just not. Because words are limiting, uh, and our feelings are infinite and universal, are, are infinite and powerful, and so many things going on. And I think it's such a more, I think it's incredible when you have great writing coming together with like incredible emotional opinions and emotional attitudes. Then it's like, I think that's part of the danger. I think is great writing contributes to the danger, mm -hmm. and then actors mm -hmm. also making these really brave choices. So it's maybe not. It's not all in the acting. It's also the writing can really level up that danger as well, too. But, yeah. I guess, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And everyone else as well, like costume or lighting. Like every, everyone Everything. else can also Everything. be like really dangerous in their choices. Yeah. Mm. Music. Everything. Definitely. Everything. Directing. Lighting. Yeah, totally lighting. Yeah. It's quite addictive. Um, I liked asking this question, and maybe this is a good question um, as we kind of finish soon, is that Philip Seymour Hoffman at, was asked a really great question. Hey, um, Ken, is there any advice you'd give to just, you know, to new actors? I, I, I work with, I, I, I encounter a lot of new actors around the world every week in the work that I do. And is there any advice you would give to someone or if you were to go back to your school and to sort of say something to them or say something to your younger self, you know, what, what would that be? What would you recommend or right. say? Actually, um, uh, a few years back, I, me and my wife went, went back to Australia for a bit and I visited my old school and it was a company meeting time actually. And everyone was there, the younger kids were there and, um, and they knew, they knew, um, thankfully that, um, that I, I did some project after school so they were cool. listening to me <laughs> and um Great. but um uh, when i was a student uh, as well um i hated it when um all the other grads say like oh industry is hard real world is so hard you know you have to really struggle and you know you know yeah. everything i hated that um so what i said then and what uh, what i believe is just just keep going you know just try what you want to do just just do whatever you think you want to do um and that's how i guess i did that's what i'm doing and i that's something that i will keep doing because um um it actually does happen you know when when you actually try to make something happen it it, it happens nothing is impossible like I was um, I was before I went to Australia. I was a uh, I was stu studying business at, at Japanese University. Um, no, nobody really thought I would be uh, an actor um, in, in a Hollywood movie. But a few years later, I, I, I was. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. nothing is impossible. I think, and thankfully, yeah. you know, I had lots of help from lots of people, and you know, I'll never forget that. But you know, uh, what you are aiming for can be achieved to a certain extent. Cool. That's beautiful. So, Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is really awesome. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I always tell actors to like, let go of stories of suffering, you know, these mind mm -hmm. viruses, these stories that you have of suffering um, will do more to, to keep you from what you want to do. Um, and your path is different than somebody else's path. Mm. Yeah, really cool. Definitely. I mean, you know, everyone's not the same, you know. We don't 
follow each other's path, obviously. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah. And now you're producing too, so I'm looking forward to seeing your <laughs> once it's done. Hopefully it happens as well. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that'd be great. We should do like a screening here with like we could call everybody that'd on Zoom. Really cool. <laughs> that'd, be awesome. that'd be awesome. That'd be amazing. That'd be fine. That'd be awesome. We we should do, we should organize something. We'd love right. to. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, all yeah. in. The infinite Have to make a decent one first, then. <laughs> no, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Oh, great. Oh, thank cool. you, Ken. No, thank, thank, you thank you so much. Thank you so much for... for yeah. um, There's so many good stories today. It's very really awesome. good. <laughs> it's super yeah. fun. Yeah, Ken, thank, thank you. you very much for doing this and, and hanging out with us and just... Uh, you know, not at all. Thank you for, for this opportunity. It was, it was amazing for me as well, definitely. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Next time, next time, please try to... Have a session with Joseph. It's it's awesome. Oh, definitely. Oh. Please, uh, and you yeah. won't be intimidated. You're gonna have to, <laughs> you're gonna have so much fun. You're like, oh yeah. You're just like, can yeah. I do it again? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not Venezuelan, and um, I will not. I will not break your spirit. And uh, I can get Venezuelan on you, but I promise I won't get Venezuelan on you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. And if there, there's a there's a time you want to come and watch a daytime class, just a, as you like, just let Eugene know. And um, I'm always would love you to be a guest and, and come watch the work. Beautiful. It'd be an honor to work with you at some point. Congratulations on on everything that you're doing. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you so much. And um, hopefully, I mean, you know, this is working obviously, um, but hopefully, um, if we could meet in person as well in the future, that'd be I'd love to. Well. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be <laughs> terrific. I'm like, yes! I'm like, from my <laughs> <laughs> Totally. Thank great. you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you to um, our special guest, Ken, uh, Eugene. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. And, thank um, you. Thank you guys for, thank you guys for hanging out with us again. Can't wait to see you soon. Take care. Matone Ishmael.